Good morning, everyone. This is my first time live uh, on a Sunday morning with Epworth. I never thought that my first Sunday morning at Epworth would be like this, but this is what's happening, so we're going to make the best of it. Um, I know that we are going to take a few minutes and probably more than a few minutes. It's going to take us a while to build an audience. So I'm going to just forge ahead and welcome everyone who's watching now or everybody who maybe watches it later. Um, I see one person. That's so awesome. So welcome. And, uh, and we're going to do this on Sunday mornings. This is going to be our way of worshiping. Oh, hey, Heather. Good to see you this morning. Thanks for joining me. Um, I hope that you guys will jump on and spend some time with us, uh, or so with me this morning. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna spend some time in the Word and in prayer. And I would ask that as you're watching, if you have a comment, say hello. First of all, I'd like to know that you're here. And uh, if you are watching and you have a prayer request, please type that into the comments. Um, let's interact together. This is a way of us being able to connect. It's a great gift that God has given us through the the internet that we can be in community and we can be one with each other, um, even though we're far apart. So um, let's take a moment for prayer first, shall we? Let's pray. Holy. God, we just thank you so much for waking us up this morning and giving us a new day. Thank you for the bright sun and just the reminder that you are God, you are the creator God, and that you are in control. So Lord, as we gather together, Lord, we just ask that you would unite us in spirit. You have said when two or more gather, you will be there. So we ask that you will be here with us and connect us in spirit, connect us in heart and in mind and in body, even when we cannot be physically together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, my husband is watching too, which is nice. <laughs> anyway, good morning, you guys. I want to take up just a few minutes. You know, it's the 4th of July weekend, and I, I don't know how you spent your weekend, but my weekend so far has been very different from 4th of July in the past. Usually 4th of July, my whole family gets together, but because, um, you know, we're all kind of connected to the military and to the government, and uh, we are on travel restrictions. My husband can't travel, and my son-in-law can't travel, so we couldn't get together with our kids and our grandkids this weekend. Um, so that was kind of different. Um, but it's interesting because I, I did a a lot of thinking yesterday about the 4th of July and what the 4th of July means. And I want to talk about that for, for just a few minutes, if you'll go with me there and think about what we celebrate on the 4th of July as Americans. We really celebrate our independence and we celebrate the fact that we launched, um, not we, but our forefathers, and it was fathers way back when, um, over 200 years ago, launched a new nation with just some very powerful words of independence. And I want to remind us of these words this morning. If you'll listen to this, this is from the preamble to the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evidence. This is what we know to be true, and it's what, you can't deny it, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I thought about that yesterday, and I thought, gosh, those are powerful words, that we feel like this is a truth that is undeniable, that all people, all men, and they said men at this time, and it's interesting if you think about it, that when this was written way back when, and we can, we have to be honest about this now, even back when these words were written about the rights um, to pursue happiness and liberty and, um, and have life, when, when these words were written way back when, they were written by white men, really about white men. They were talking about men, and they didn't even think about everybody having the same rights as men as they had. And yet, um, here we are 200 plus years later, and we are, um, we are a strong country, and we are a country that's moving forward, and we look back on our history, and we recognize that we have a lot of work to do, um, that we have done a lot of work, and we've come a long way from when these words were, were first written, and we have a lot of work to do going forward. And I think it's important for us to go back and look at those. Um, good morning, George and Susie. It's it, important to go back and look at those words, I think, and realize that that is the foundation of our country. And I think that the found, that foundation of our country is still strong today, and we can still build on that because those principles, even though at the time they were written, um, didn't always apply to everyone, and they were limited in what they were thinking as they wrote those words, we have seen the progress that has been made in 200 plus years of um, of expanding those rights and expanding those attitudes of who those rights apply to. It's not just men anymore, it's humanity. And and it's really not just white men. Um, it's, it's, it's broadening to all people of all races, of all nations, and, and, that, and they have the importance um, of having those rights. And there's, a, there's some key words in there that I think if we focus on the key words, we can recognize how that applies to everyone and how we can take those key words and use those to expand that even further um, into the future. 
to have a strong country that we can celebrate 200 more years from now or that our, our ancestors can, or our, um, our descendants can celebrate 200 year, more years. So let's look at these words that I think are really key to this. They said, all men are created equal and they are endowed by a creator. And that's written with a capital C. We were created by something and that person is bigger and bolder and capital letter compared to us. And I think if we go back and recognize what they were saying when they wrote that part of this, then we can understand why the rest of it has been able to endure and expand and grow. And then we can also go forward with that same knowledge and understanding. So let's look at what it means to be created by something bigger and more profound than ourselves. Let's go into Genesis 1 for a minute with me. And uh, let's look at Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Hear these words. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man, humanity, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And let's think what that means, you guys. At the very beginning, we know that there was the Trinity. It says in the, at the very beginning of Genesis that in the beginning, God created and that the Spirit hovered over the deep. We also know from John, from, uh, John 1, that in the beginning, Jesus, the Word, was part of that. God spoke, the Word moved, and creation happened. And, over, and so the Trinity together, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, created everything. And as they were creating, they kept saying, this is good, this is good, this is good. And then they got to the very last part of they said, let's create humanity. Let's create a being and let's create that being in our own image. And the image that we're thinking about here is not so much what you physically look like as it is a, um, a personality, uh, personal traits, uh, attitudes, uh, uh, feelings, and, and, um, and a way of approaching life. And if you think about it, there's a great book by Tim Keller um, that you'll hear me talk about a lot. It's called King's Cross. And Tim Keller talks about the Trinity and how there was the dance of the Trinity. And it was a dance of love. It was a constant interaction of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit constantly pouring love and kindness on each other. They existed for the benefit of a loving relationship for the other. And out of that relationship, they created this being they called man or that they called Adam. And so that out of that loving relationship became a new relationship of Adam. And when they created that relationship, they said, let's create him in our image, which means that we that, that image is a reflection of the triune God. It's a reflection of that relationship, that loving relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's how we were created. That's what humanity was created. And God himself breathed life into Adam. And he said, oh, this is so good. And then if you go forward to chapter two, we know that God, and it says, this in, uh, in verse um, 18. God, the triune God, looked at Adam and he said, and the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And then we know the story that he then put Adam to sleep and he reached inside of Adam and he pulled out a rib and he created this perfect mate for Adam. Um, and it says, if you go forward to verse 20, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God created man to fall into a deep, caused man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and had, he had taken out of man and he brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh in unity with each other. And guys, I don't want to get caught up. It's too early in my relationship with F Epworth for me to get caught up in the politics of what marriage is and the difference between man and women and gender and all that kind of stuff. Those are important conversations and we need to have those conversations. But let's get to know each other first and let's get to trust each other first. What I want to talk about, what I want to um, emphasize this morning is that God created a person out of his own image, the triune God, his image of a loving relationship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he created another being. And he looked at that other being, and before Adam even knew it himself, the loving kindness of God looked at Adam and said, whoa, wait a minute. 
everything is good, but this is not good because Adam is by himself. And Adam was created out of a loving relationship for a loving relationship, and yet we didn't give him that. So immediately the triune God corrected that by making Eve and making this woman out of the own flesh, out of the relationship that they had with Adam. They created this other relationship. Uh, it's a covenant relationship, a cutting of the skin of Adam to pull out the rib, that covenant relationship of a person for him to be in relationship with and to have that same loving relationship with that was a reflection of the triune God. And so you guys, if we think about that, that's how we were created. We were all created by the creator, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God, to reflect their image. And out of that, we all have the rights that they're talking about in the, in the Declaration of Independence to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if you really think about that, that the Creator God started that. He looked at this person, Adam, and he said, he's got to have the best. He's got to have the best of life, which means he's got to be in loving, caring relationship with other peace, people. And so out of love and care for Adam, he created woman that partner, that relationship for him, him to have in human form. Guys, that's how we were created. And so the key to us being reflective of our creator is to be in relationship with other, with other people, but especially in a relationship where we are constantly looking for ways to love and be kind to other people. That's a reflection of our creator, God. That's the character of God that we are created in the image of. That's how what we should reflect. So as we look forward to our, to how we can find our way through the next few years and the next you know century or so in American history. We don't know what it's going to look like, but I can tell you right now we're in turmoil. I don't have to tell you that. There's so much um, anger and resentment and frustration and, and, and there's protest. I mean, down at the oceanfront yesterday, they had this huge protest about racism on the 4th of July. So we're celebrating our country and yet we're angry and, and we're, and, and, um, and we're protesting our country at the same time, which is important. We have to have those, those voices and we need to be able to speak that way, but we need to do it in a way that reflects the character of our creator. That's what American was, America was built on, was that, that relationship and that kindness to one another. You know, it's interesting in the paper, even today, um, there's an article talking about how kindness is the key to endurance and to, to, to a, a culture thriving, even in the animal kingdom. Animals, they, were, they studied um, apes and animals that are are kind to one another and take care of one another and, and work together, those um, communities thrive. And that is very true um, for humanity as well. If we as Americans want to thrive and want to move, move forward, we need to find a way to reflect the, the character of our creator um, and reflect his kindness and his love and his interaction and, and working together and constantly doing for the other. So I would challenge you guys today um, in celebration of our independence, in celebration of the signing of this Declaration of Independence that launched our, our country, I would challenge you today to remember the creator that gave you the rights that they celebrated and that they upheld um, and, and in, the, in that Declaration of Independence, and let's do even better. Let's forget about who the difference between race and religion and gender and all these different attitudes and politics and all that stuff, and let's just look for ways to be kind and ways to build relationships with other people because I think it's in building those relationships and working together to lift up other people's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not only your own, you know, it's not about me, me, me. It's about I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to protect your right to these things. I think if we do that, then we are truly uh, reflecting the image of our creator. So look for ways to be kind. You know, John Wesley said, do all the good you can in all the places you can with all the people you can whenever you can, as many times as you can. I don't know. I can't quote it exactly. But um, but he's basically said, be kind and do what you can to help other people all the time. Be good all the time, as many times and as many ways as you possibly can. So I want to challenge you guys today. Look for ways to be kind. Who can you be kind to? What is something you can do to be kind? And I'm just going to, I will get political for just a second. Guys, I think it's so dumb. Um, that this um, wearing a mask in, the, in America right now has become such a political thing. To me, that's such a, an easy way to be kind. I feel like if you put a mask on your face right now, what you're saying to the world is not I'm afraid. What you're saying to the world is I value you enough to watch out for you. I value you, I value our society, I value our culture enough to cooperate. So that's just an easy thing for me. I don't see why that's to me a no-brainer. Just do that for out of kindness. That tells the world around you that your life is as important as mine and your freedom and your, your um, ability to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is just as important to me as, um, 
as it, as it is, as my own. So that's loving others as you love yourself, as Jesus tells us to do. So anyway, that's, um, I hope that that's, that will lift you up today and, and, um, and help you to think about what it really means as we go forward in America with, in the midst of all we're in. Uh, I think the best way to do it is reflect um, the image of our creator with kindness. So I challenge you in that today. Hey guys, um, what do we need to pray for today? Does anybody have any prayer requests? Uh, I haven't seen a lot of comments, just a few people, kind of my friends. Um, hey Betty, good to see you here this morning. I appreciate you guys coming and joining me this morning. I, I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a while to build an audience here at Epworth, I think. Um, uncharted new territory for them, so, so we're gonna try this. Um, Anyway, so I, I'm going to pray for us and pray for peace in our country and reconciliation and healing in our country. If anybody has any prayer requests, those that maybe will watch this later, feel free to write your prayer requests in, type them in the comments. I will go back and look at that. I do get, I get notifications when those comments are made and I will go back and look at that and I promise that I will, I will pray for that. Um, I will be back here on Tuesday at 10 o'clock and then on Thursday, I'm going to have to go earlier because I got a meeting at 10, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. But, but I'm going to do this Sundays, Tuesdays and Thursdays and I hope that you guys will join us or join me and um and we are working to get the doors open uh we are we are meeting this week and, and making plans for that so uh keep praying about it and keep pushing forward and we will get through this all together so let's pray together Holy God, I thank you so much once again for today. I thank you for my friends that have joined here. Thank you for the sweet blessing of just friends who are encouragers and, and who connect. Uh, thank you for the gift of that ability to connect, even though we're, we're far apart. Father, as we, uh, as we go forward uh, as Americans and as human beings created in your image, Lord, remind us, and thank you for reminding us today, that, that, that part of being a reflection of that image is to be kind. So Lord, we just ask that kindness would be poured out over the over our country, over our community. Start with us. Start with us, with our neighbors and our friends and family. Help us to find ways to be kind today. Lord, we lift up our country. We ask for healing. We ask for reconciliation. We ask for peace. We ask for us to move forward and continue to grow and to continue to build on the principles of that we were created by you with rights that you have given to us, a right to life. Thank you for breathing life into our country. Thank you for breathing life into each of us, Lord. And we just ask that you would bring peace. We ask also for healing for all those who are sick and who are frightened and who are um, in despair today, Lord. We ask healing. Uh, we just give you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys, thanks for being here. Hi, Brian, good to see you here this morning. Thanks for joining us. Anybody else have prayer requests? I don't really see any, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off and I will watch for that and you guys add them later and um, share this with your friends. So you guys have a great day. God bless you. I will see you on Tuesday.